for our last talk, I'd really like to um, welcome you to Claude and Lincoln um, from Cespinex. So, welcome to the show. Welcome to the stage. Hi, uh, I'm Lincoln. Uh, so my job here is really to introduce the the why. Um, so Claude's been helping us on our AI journey. Um, it's been really fantastic, and I, I have to admit, if you're going to do it, jump in because uh, it's uh, it's well worthwhile. So, uh, so what are we all about? We're about intelligence and sustainability. So we help businesses decarbonize and reduce energy. Um, we've been doing this for a, quite a long time. And so, in terms of what we do, I'll let the numbers speak for themselves. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Uh, so, we monitor at the moment about 57 million kilowatt hours of energy uh, across about 750 sites. It's about 150 old clients. Um, just to put that in context, that's about 71,000 houses. So, we, we monitor businesses. Um, 71,000 houses is about the size of Wellington, so we, we monitor quite a lot of energy. Um, we've, during our time, we've saved $43 million for the businesses that we work with, and 54,000 tonnes of carbon uh, has been avoided. And again, just putting that in context, um, 215 million kilometres of, uh, of travel, uh, which I think I did the numbers as up and down the country, uh, 170,000 times or something. So it's it's quite a lot of carbon we're starting to uh, avoid here. Um, so we're very data-based. I mean, if you're going to drive uh, sustainable improvements in energy and carbon emissions, you need to keep a really strong eye on what you're doing. Uh, so we're very data-driven, and so over the last 12 years, we've been collecting data right around the country and you know, storing it in the cloud. Uh, Really, really for, for now, uh, as we've started our AI journey. Um, so what do we do? Uh, sorry, Microsoft, for the, uh, the picture in the middle there. But um, on the right-hand side, we gather a whole bunch of data from a variety of data sources, from inside buildings, uh, weather data, production data, um, pump it up into the cloud uh, using IoT. And then we're doing data analytics, uh, usually using Power BI to do the, the ad hoc reporting machine learning and AI, and doing the reporting for the clients so that they can understand what's going on. Um, we're using now machine learning and human intelligence to drive insights uh, that help our, our, the companies we work for to reduce their energy and, and carbon emissions. So that's kind of how, that's kind of what we do. So, you know, we're doing pretty well, and that's exciting. We're really happy with what we do. So really the question is kind of what's the problem? And... And, and really, this is the problem here. So this is our vision, and the key point in here is about every business. So at the moment, we work for about 150-odd businesses, 750 spot sites. There's tens of thousands of sites out there. So we really want to do what we do really well for a lot more bus businesses, both in New Zealand and globally. So to do that, um, given a lot of what we do at the moment is based on human intelligence, um, we need to get a lot more scalable. Um, we need to get a lot, uh, lot more productive about how we um, understand what's going on inside buildings and understand um, how we can help businesses. And that's really where Claude came in. And so with that introduction, I'll hand over and he can tell you how we did it. Thank you, Lincoln. Thank you for this um, introduction. So I'm Claude. I'm the founder and uh, head of AI at Sapiens. Sapiens is, um, is a company that helps organizations to build and scale um, AI-powered um, services or products. Um, so as Lincoln said, um, really the North Star on this project is to go a step forward. So ESP is doing an amazing job. Um, and now we have a challenge of scalability. We want to go a step further in terms of uh, energy, water, and gas uh, saving. That's, um, I was very aligned with um, Lincoln's vision um, because, yeah, I agree. This is our responsibility as businesses and as individuals to take action um, and to tackle this, um, this problem. Um, and it's also because New Zealand is um, a part of the Paris Agreement. Uh, as you can hear with my accent, I come from France, and I was born and raised in Paris, so 
it resonates with my um, personal story. So let's go. Um, we are lucky because we work with ESP. ESP work with more than 700 sites throughout New Zealand. So we have an amazing market penetration opportunity here. We work with um, uh, ASB Bank, so financial services, Auckland Council, public sector, Air New Zealand, um, we all know this one, and Wilson Hellaby, which is an industrial site. So we can see we have a wide var variety of, um, of sites, which is an amazing opportunity again to, um, to make progress here. So saving water, power, and gas is the North Star. Um, but to do so, you need to be able to know um, what are the needs of people on site. You need to understand why do they use energy, why do they use water, why do they use gas, what do they do with that. You need to build a system that is able to react quickly. So um, if you use energy, um, and if you have an energy drift, you need to have quickly a response um, to help you to, um, to get back uh, on the right track. And we need to make the result actionable, because it's good to tell people, oh, you have an issue with your energy here, but it's better to say you have an issue here, and here is how you could address that. So that's very important, and that's a critical point as well. And um, we also keep, keep that in mind as part of the design. So let's do a little exercise here. Here is the energy consumption of a bank branch uh, here in New Zealand, in Auckland. And just with that, we can extract a lot of information and we can understand a lot of things. For example, we can know when the site is open. We can know the peak hour. We can know when they operate, so when the site is closed. We can know that they operate five days a week, um, from Monday to Friday. We can know that they take coffee breaks around lunchtime. <laughs> and we can also know um, that they do not operate on weekends. That's, that's, the, yeah, that's the most simple uh, graph you could see. We have much more complex graphs here. But just to give you a sense of how we can understand um, people's needs on site. So that's the first part. The second part here, our intuition here, is to be able to detect any uh, issue on site. So for example, the blue line here is a prediction generated based on multiple factors. Um, and the goal is to predict what will be the demand, the energy demand um, on the next day to be able to know what is normal, what is not normal, and where to set expectation, and when we should escalate and raise an issue. If, for example, we have a water leak like this. So the goal is to raise this issue as early as possible so, um, so we don't end up in a situation where things are going through the roof. I'm obsessed with this number. 87% of AI projects never make it to production. That's our problem here, guys. Um, and, um, and one of those reasons is that um, people tend to forget that uh, AI project do you, we do not manage AI project the same way that we manage um, traditional software projects. Um, that's new. That's normal. Uh, <laughs> and um, and this is what we learn along the way on how we uh, we achieve to be in the thirteen uh, percent. So Lincoln is now in the thirteen percent. Congratulations. Um, so first of all, have a I would recommend to have a scientific approach here and be very clear on what you'd like to, um, to achieve. So first of all, um, you'd like to demonstrate that is AI the right approach? Question number one, do we really need AI or not? Um, in our case, for our business case, um, can we detect automatically operating hours? So can we because it's an important factor to predict the, um, the, de the energy demand. Uh, does it work for any industry? Um, does it work the same way in an airport or in a bank branch? Uh, this is something we need to demonstrate before we move forward. Um, does it work for any type of resource, um, any period of the year? Um, and can we get results with a reasonable amount of time? Because time matters here. Um, because it's good to have great results, but if it's too late, that's not great anymore. Um, 
So yeah, my first um, recommendation will be start always with a proof of concept. Don't uh, try to um, don't try to boil the ocean at the first attempt. Um, first of all, dare to be clear. Help your team to help you. So make sure you have smart goals. Make sure that your goals are aligned with um, your business strategy. Um, keep thing, keep it lean. So. Find a use case, find an example, stick to it, try to solve it. Don't try to boil the ocean again. Keep it short. This one is very important too. Um, I will always recommend to make sure that your proof of concept is less than four weeks. It's very, uh, to put a number here, but it's roughly the order of magnitude that it should last. If you are working on a proof of concept for more than six months, there is a problem here. Um, and make sure you have constant feedback. So make sure, so for example, with Lincoln and his team, um, twice a week we had uh, feedback from the team to make sure we are able to readjust and make sure we are on the right track. So that's critical and very important. So yeah, industry expert, domain experts, um, like Lincoln's team, was, it was very important to have them on board. Um, it was just a game changer. Um, make sure you have a small team, but skilled team, so make sure um, you have data science skills uh, as part of your team um, and people that are able to embrace complexity because the proof of concept can be very intense, but it's very rewarding. Once you get there, I, this one is important too. Before you go ahead, uh, I think we already mentioned um, a few times responsible AI, ethic, uh, ethics about AI, around AI. But here's the AI triangle. So that's the three factors um, where you're gonna have to make trade-offs. So you need to choose, you don't need to choose, but you need to make sure that um, your budget, your cost, and your time to market, um, your performance of your system, and also the transparency here. This is something we rarely talk about, but because people tend to focus on the budget and the performance of the system, but you should also make sure that you have a system, AI system that people can trust and make sure that, and people, that, and make sure that this system is auditable. So make sure that whenever there is a result that comes out of this system, you are able to say, hold on, okay, why are you telling me this? Um, and you, you are able to retro-engineer your results um, to make it explainable. So that's something, again, keep that in mind. So after the proof of concept, here, um, here is our results. Um, so we've been able to detect energy waste. Um, so that's pretty clear here, actually. Do I need to comment that? <laughs> so here was the... Um, the, the performance of the tra with using traditional methods, and here's the performance of the system using machine learning. Um, so yeah, so when you end up in a situation where you have this kind of number at the end of your proof of concept, um, first of all, share it with, um, with, uh, with your team, and this is very something that is important for people like, like Lincoln that needs to manage a budget, uh, he's a decision maker, so he needs to know um, if he's taking the right direction and he needs to know if uh, he can still invest in this project and move forward. So that's very, see a, you need to see a proof of concept almost as, a, as an investment strategy. Now, um, now we want to scale up. No, now we want to see that everywhere. We want to have great numbers everywhere. Um, but there is a challenge here. Again, we receive a lot of data every day. So uh, half a million data points ingested on a daily basis and in real time uh, throughout the country. So from Dunedin to uh, Auckland um, on more than 700 sites. And it also means that we monitor at scale uh, more than 5,000 machines operating every day throughout the country. And we generate those predictions on a daily basis. So we need to train and retrain model on a daily basis. So more than 5,000, we train more than 5,000 models on a daily basis. That's, that's the, yeah, we can call that scaling. Um, 
And um, why do we do that every day? Because we need to make sure that we are as close as possible to the reality on site. And if there is any needs, any if the demand is changing on the site, if they are making any change, if they are closing a site, if they are reopening a new site, we need to be as close as possible to this reality to be as accurate as possible. So that's why we do that. That's what it costs to save energy. Um, I won't spend too much time on this slide because um, I think it will require an entire, um, an entire AI show on how, do we, how we scale machine learning. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the important thing here is that we get data from, from all those sites and we are able to generate um, alerts and, um, and tell people on site if there is any issue uh, in real time. So, so far we've run that um, um, last February was the first month we've tried to, um, to use this solution and we've annualized the first results and we can already tell um, that we have amazing numbers for three different categories. First of all, and the most important one, and um, some, the, the number that is the most meaningful for all of us, is the um, opportunity to save more than 500 gigawatt hour per year using this type of technology. So that's just massive. And with something that is very autonomous, so very little manual intervention, um, that's just a big win. And more than um, 31 tons of, um, of carbon emission as well. For, the for ESP's clients, obviously, if they spend less uh, money on water, gas, and power, they're going to save a lot of money. And um, you can try. If you, um, if you tell uh, to your clients, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save you um, a lot of money, they're going to be very happy. So it all obviously impacts the customer satisfaction, which is good for, for ESP. And also, internally, in terms of operation, they're able to dramatically cut down the um, OPEX cost, at least for the um, monitoring activity. So that's, I think we all win here. Um, so we, yeah, we are able to build a better, cheaper, and faster solution here, um, which is which was the goal. So we are very, very happy about that. And um, yeah, I'm going to finish on something that really inspires me. I think the best way to predict the future is to create it. So there, go for it, try. If you have an idea, execute on this idea, try, um, and you'll see amazing things gonna happen. If you wanna have a chat with us afterwards, feel free, we'll be in the room. Thank you.